Hello, this is a trade site trade recap. I wanted to walk you through uh, the last couple of days on the ES. This is the S&P E-mini futures contract. This is what we use as our uh, guide for the market direction. This is a, what decides whether or not we're looking at the long or short side of the market. We also trade this directly. And we're going to overlay it with our trade site Comer tool and talk about how that has uh, impacted the market so far this week. Now, this is uh, the first week of October 2013. And this big gap down, you see, this is Monday. So we got uh, a nine bar setup phase that then uh, topped out the market briefly. And then another nine bar setup phase on Monday that topped out the market briefly. Remember, you have to get these nine bar setup phases first to then get the beginning of the Comer count, which is the light blue uh, numbers that you see here on the screen. And so at the end of Monday, we had a nine bar setup phase. Now, I don't usually like these uh, setup phases when they're split between two days. But because we didn't have a gap in the market Tuesday morning, at least it's a little more interesting. So we complete the nine bar setup phase here. And, and I've, I've frozen this uh, chart a couple about an hour into uh, Tuesday morning's trade. And you can see at this point reaching back, doing the actual blue comer count, we're at bar eight. To get to a bar 13, that's going to be a sell signal. So let's go ahead and play it forward. And you'll see that there was a new nine bar setup phase forming that got uh, deleted because we didn't get through the ninth bar consecutively using our four bar look back criteria. So there's bar nine. When I get to the 13, you're going to hear a loud alert that lets you know that we're there. Uh, what's interesting is there's 10, 11, 12, and one more high will do it. Here's your 13. So basically over lunch on Tuesday, we got the 13 signal. Now, what did that mean for the market for the rest of the day? Well, let's take a look and find out. So far, it's the high, starting to come back in. There's 2 p.m. Eastern time. There's a new nine bar setup phase to the downside. Still heading low. So that's it. That was the high of the session, that 13th bar using our Comer tool. This is the bars that print right after the market. Remember that futures are open after the stock market closes. So there's your three bars for that. So basically the high of the day was that 13th bar on the Comer. Now, what's interesting is you don't get, just like you saw Monday, had no Comer sell signal or buy signal. We never got to a 13. You can go days without actually getting a, a, full, a full signal with the a Comer tool just because you have to meet the very specific criteria uh, for, for the count. So here we go. Here's a look at uh, Wednesday's action. You can see we got a gap down in the markets. Okay. And... The first hour was a little more negative. And let's see what ends, up hap what ends up happening on Wednesday. Again, you're going to get a loud sound alert when we get the nine bar setup phase, which is right there. Now we get the uh, Comer count again starting. That's the blue numbers. It can reach back into the count using our two bar look back criteria. And let's see what, what we end up with for Wednesday's action. There's eight. Another nine bar setup tried to complete and failed. There's 910. Now we're over lunch. Eleven twelve. There's your 13 with still over two hours left. What does that lead to for the rest of the day? Well, let's go ahead and skip forward and see. Yep, once again. Look at that. The high of the session. Tried to make a run at it and couldn't and failed right at the close, and now we're in the aftermarket. Pretty amazing. So what happens next? This is for Thursday, the day we just completed. We're going to get kind of a flat opening. Let's keep an eye on what happens here. So we get a downward move right out of the gate. And you're going to get another loud sound effect when we get the nine bar setup phase to the downside. You get the blue numbers underneath this time because this one's downward instead of upward. We reach back into that count, look for the two bar look back criteria. That's the numbers that you see. So now it's the blue one through six so far. Notice that we're finding support at this point, right at the red line. That's the static trend line of the nine bar move from the prior day. Okay. So what we like to see on these Comer counts, by the way, those static trend lines are trade two targets. So on the Wednesday count moving up, we get the Comer sell signal up here after the nine bar setup phase with a static trend line. The rollover leads to the static trend line, which it should. Okay. Now let's keep playing it forward. See what happens. Seven. There's eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 
12. There's a 13 signal right at noon Eastern time on Thursday. Is it even remotely possible that that ends up being the low of the day after we've had two days in a row where it was the high of the session? Let's find out. Remember, we could get a new nine bar setup phase here as well, which we did. There's that sound alert. So that gives us a new static trend line, the most recent nine bar setup phase. The downside is the green static trend line. Here's the rest of the day. Look at that, right to that green static trend line. New nine bar setup face to the upside, by the way. And then let's just roll through the last two hours. That's remarkable. Nothing else happens for the day. And again, right after the close, you get a little sell up. So there it is. The 13 Comer buy signal was the low of the session on Thursday after the 13 Comer sell signal was the high of the session, both on Tuesday, Wednesday. Three days in a row, three signals, 100% accuracy. That is truly remarkable.